Hello, this is the trade site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, the 30th of June, 2014, which is halfway through the year already, and ending Friday, the 4th of July, which is a U.S. bank holiday and stock market holiday as well. So a couple of things to bookend the week. Let's start with the fact that Monday is the last day of June. It makes it the last day of the month, the last day of the quarter, the last day of the half mid-year point, all of which is usually to say that stocks have already been pegged to their prices at this point where the big players want them to be for end of statement printing and therefore you probably won't get much out of Monday. Friday the markets are closed, Thursday they will be open but probably weak in the afternoon as everybody takes off for the long weekend. That leaves Tuesday and Wednesday full of potential. We'll discuss that in a few moments. Here's a look at the ES. This is the S&P E mini futures contract daily chart. This is the front month contract. You can see that uh, we haven't made any new progress for the last couple of weeks, really, sitting right where we were two weeks, three weeks ago. Uh, a couple of new bar highs, and we would have a new 13 sell signal. Last time we got one was at the beginning of April, and that did cause a sell-off of about 100 points. And then we recovered from it like it never even happened, and eventually broke out again. Uh, part of the breakout again was on the raid announcements out of Europe, stimulated things, but... Again, we'll get this next 13 sell signal. Potentially, uh, could be this week even. Uh, we'll see. And uh, go from there. All right, let's take a look at uh, the NASDAQ side as well. New highs on the NASDAQ. And that is uh, 10 bars up at this point. So we're also getting near a sell signal on the NASDAQ side. Note that the NASDAQ hasn't had a sell signal since back in December. So that would be interesting to get to a 13 there on the NASDAQ. Uh, next up, we've got uh, the SOX index. Uh, actually, was down this week. Always interesting to see when the NASDAQ side is up. Here's a look at the biotechs. Drifting higher, but you'll note that they're not at new highs. They had their significant highs for the year in February and March. Uh, here's a look at the oil. Not surprisingly, up at this time of year. Not really running, though. This is interesting, considering everything going on uh, in the world, in the Middle East, in Ukraine, and uh, the time of year where we're heading into hurricane season. Usually you would expect oil to be higher. Let's scroll back here and take a look at what it was doing last year around uh, this time. So here's late last two bars, June and July, and you start running in July usually. Uh, so I don't know. That's usually the time of year for it. It's just natural. But we were at the same area price-wise last year at this point in time. So uh, let's go back one more year just so you can see what it often looks like uh, around this period. And you can see even though it was heading down uh, in May and June the year before, it started moving up again. In July and hurricane season. We've been up to this point, obviously, uh, not really heading down, but flat to up, obviously, with the world situation. But it is it is interesting. It's not heading up higher with everything that's going against it. And here's a look at gold, which has rebounded a bit uh, in the last week or so. Let's also take an opportunity to go through some of our key stocks that we trade. Uh, here's a look at Apple now that it has split. And the split was essentially the high. We knew that was going to happen. Stocks run up into their splits and then roll over. Nothing new there. Let's look at Google, who made some of their big announcements this week at their I.O. convention. And uh, stock's been up on that. Here's a look at Amazon. Been pretty flat. Here's a look at Tesla, another one we like to trade. Holding up basing, good basing action here on uh, on Tesla. Here's a look at Netflix. You know, this one's got a nice cup for me to handle. Let's think if it goes to that next level and breaks out over that 459 or whatever that is, uh, that could be significant. But right now it's using the green static trend line off of our tool is resistance. I think that's important to note. That's not the old high. It's the count from our uh, nine bar down move back in March, the high of that range. That's a very important differential uh, on that tool right there. Uh, so, you know, a lot of things have been flat. And again, you get near the end of the quarter, especially the end of June, the second quarter of the year, which is the midway point, things do tend to go flat. We had Russell uh, index rebalancing on Friday right at the close. And uh, so a lot of markets are driven by these bigger factors that people don't really understand, but that creates a lot of flat action. And we had a very nice trading week this last week. Monday and Tuesday in particular were good. Thursday was all right. Uh, Friday, as expected, really nothing going on uh, leading into the end of the quarter. So, uh, all right, let's take a look at uh, the uh, some of the five-minute charts of the futures that we like to follow here. Uh, here is the ES, uh, not the five-minute chart, sorry, uh, the 10-minute chart of the ES. And this is uh, the last five days, obviously. You can see where we went for the whole week. We ended up right where we started. So basically, uh, Friday to Monday's 
open was very flat. Monday was flat. We somehow had a very nice trade day on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, uh, gap down a little, headed up, rolled over. Uh, let me remove, by the way, uh, this one set of lines. We don't need them for this particular conversation. There we go. Uh, Tuesday up and then back down. We had a real nice trading day on Tuesday, both directions, actually. Uh, Wednesday opened flat and then drifted higher. Thursday dropped down sharply and then rebounded and ended up closing even. And again, what's interesting about this is, you know, when you finally get the big down day, and we did it on Tuesday, you know, it feels like there's maybe some selling pressure building up in the market. We finally have this big down day. I mean, the S&P drops about 20 points for the session. Then you get the one day of pause, you kind of drift back up. And then you look for that, that drop to resume, and we kind of got it initially on Thursday. The problem is you're so close to the end of the quarter, and they've got these stocks pegged to the prices they want. You just, it's not going to follow through. It just never feels like it will. And so sure enough, after that initial volley, uh, drifted back up, and then Friday basically dead flat into the last couple of minutes of play. Uh, so that's pretty unexciting in general. Here's a look at the NASDAQ side. Actually closed at the highs of the week on the NASDAQ side, uh, which is amusing when you realize that a lot of people would point the focus of the week to the two big sell-offs that we had, uh, but we actually gained uh, a good 30 points on the NASDAQ for the week. All right, so what do we have for this week ahead? Well, like I said, it's it's uh, you got the dumbbell effect of Monday and Friday both having something to pay attention to, which is that uh, Monday we've got uh, the end of the quarter, and that kind of has a, a specific role that it plays in that um, everything's basically pegged. I wouldn't expect much out of Monday. I mean, we'll still be around trading the first two hours. There can be something, obviously, that'll move, but in terms of, like, any big action, I wouldn't expect it. Uh, volume will probably be on the light side right there. You might get a little move late in the day. They try to, like, there'll be a little positioning with some assumptions about what's going to happen after Monday. Uh, but this is not going to go far, or it shouldn't, barring world events, obviously. Uh, Monday, we've also got Chicago PMI 30, 15 minutes into the market. That's actually a big number, and pending home sales uh, 30 minutes into the market. All right, now we hit Tuesday. This is what's more interesting. We've got construction spending and ISM index 30 minutes in. We've got auto and truck sales in the afternoon. First day of the quarter, everything breaks free. They've held the market in place for the last week. Now, if there's any opportunity to get going, everybody starts making their moves for the quarter. They've printed their statements. They've got everything set where they wanted it to be. They've either shown the gains that they wanted for uh, the first half of the year, or they've uh, they've put the pricing where they want it so they can now try to go out and uh, make more money, uh, have bigger gains in the second half of the year. Hard to tell which at this point in time, but we will find out. But at any rate, that does mean we could get some action on Tuesday, no matter what this data shows. Wednesday, we've got the MBA Mortgage Index Challenger job cuts, ADP employment change, factory orders and crude oil inventories. None of those are huge data points. Thursday is an interesting, but we still could be moving Wednesday. Don't, don't uh, misunderstand. We could get some good movement Wednesday just based on the fact uh, that you know, we've, we've started the new quarter and everything. Now, let's take one more look at Thursday. And this is also interesting. Non-farm payrolls and unemployment rate. That's usually on a Friday, but with the Friday, uh, markets close on Friday. We're going to have it on Thursday. We also have trade balance. That's a huge number. And the in weekly initial and continuing jobless claims number. And then ISM services and natty gas. Now, that's a lot of data to get in the first hour and before the market. Uh, could easily cause some excitement here early on Thursday. And then, of course, you start to expect people to head out for the long weekend. So uh, we'll see what we can get in the early action on Thursday. I, I do believe there's some potential there. But, you know, I would focus on Tuesday and Wednesday, see if we get a move. And what I want to show you is a lot of times uh, what you'll see is here's July. And we always have, this is last year in July. You can see how the market kind of flattened out last couple days of June. Now, it, it happens one of two ways. In the, in the case of last year, you can sort of see that we held off, didn't do much for the first day or two of July. That gets you through the 4th of July holiday. So if, depending on when 4th of July is, last year I believe it was a Thursday, you know, they don't really do anything. They take the weekend off, they come back, and now they really start to make their plays for the rest of the year, and that's what pushes the market, okay? Uh, and it can push it either way. I'm not saying it has to be up. Uh, let's not get too excited about that. Uh, the, the prior year in July, this is then... Uh, 2012, uh, you know, a little bit of action to the downside after the 4th of July holiday. Uh, let's go back another year and take a look. Okay, um, you can see here, uh, 4th of July, first couple days, and then we started to head down. Uh, really sold off later on in July that year. Here's 2011. Uh, took off running after the 4th of July. Again, first three days of July. So it can, because this is uh, there's enough room here because we've got a couple, three solid days of trading. It might even happen starting on Tuesday, and that's what I really want to be aware of because sometimes it does. And uh, when that happens, you certainly want to be ready. Here's a year where we started heading down uh, pretty quickly as soon as uh, July started. 
and then actually reverse to the upside. Uh, but the question is, when are you going to get a move? Because we certainly haven't had a move recently. I think it's time to get one. So it could start out of the gate Tuesday, first day of the new quarter. Uh, here's one that was a very, very flat uh, July, obviously. Um, that doesn't happen. Typically, Julys are usually pretty good. Um, there's another July right there. And you can see it kind of heading up right out of the gate and pushed higher and then rolled over later in the month. Uh, so I think, you know, potentially, usually you have July where you've got more movement than you saw in June. That's usually what happens. Uh, we'll see if we get it again this year. And uh, August can be a little bit slower, but August, here's another one, by the way. Look at July. I got through the first few days and then just ran. Uh, August tends to be a little slower, um, tends to uh, pull back a bit. And then, uh, uh, actually, sorry, my, my, my mistake. August is one of the most positive months of the year on average. September tends to pull back a bit. And then, as usual, we bottom uh, in October. So we'll be looking for all that. And then we're heading into the best part of the year of trading come September and on. Uh, September through April is always the exciting bit. And uh, we'll see how that goes. But that's what we'll be looking for in terms of this week is whether we get a move starting Tuesday because we've got the new quarter begun. Uh, all that data on Thursday could give us some excitement early. I'm hoping for some decent days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Obviously, we're closed Friday, so we won't have anything to do there. And uh, Monday, I wouldn't bank on it just because it's the last day of the quarter. That's what we see here at TradeSite. We'll be in the lab helping you out. Have a great week, weekend, and 4th of July.